<laughs> so we're now going live. Okay. We are live. We are live. <laughs> Let me uh, get this out of the way. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Nigel's going to have to double check that the door is locked so we don't get disturbed. That'll be him racing across the right there. And kind of be caught our pants down, so to speak, because he accidentally, accidentally pushed the live button. That's what happened when we don't have our producer, Tim, around. You see what's, what's happened? We've missed him two weeks now. So, uh, so yeah, I am Sam Sneed from House of Whiskey, and eventually Mr. Nigel Kelly will make his way into the frame. Nigel Kelly, the Whiskey Baron. Now, sure. today, ladies and gentlemen, now that we've uh, got somewhat organized here, we've got a couple of pretty cool little whiskeys, something we've not really done yet. You know, we try to touch on a little bit, something different all the time, I guess. And uh, today we've got a couple of whiskeys from the Isles. And, uh, in, in both the we've actually been to the school. We have definitely been to both distilleries, yes, 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 which we will talk about at length as we do. But uh, yeah, the Isles, or how uh, we refer to the islands around Scotland, somebody, some says the Hebrides, some say Hebrides. <laughs> we won't so, talk about that. So, so back in the day, no, we, no, we, back in the day, that's too long of a story. We, we had the designation of the different areas, we had the Highlands, <laughs> Lowlands, Space Eye, there were the Islands, and then there was Isla. The uh, SWA and their infinite wisdom have changed that. So these guys now fall uh, in the Highland the region. Highlands or something. If uh, anyone could actually explain that, I'd an like island to hear. is an island. Um, so we're going to try it. I'm going to assume the Dura first. Yeah, because Talisker, you got a heck of a lot more ABV. 45.8 as per. And it's definitely got a bit more pot, more peat. Uh, Dura, a little 10 year old. So yeah, we've got two 10 year olds. Um, and I mean, I'd have to say Talisker 10 is one of the all time. Okay, yeah, it's one of the classic malts, but just in general. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was designated classic malt by Diageo, one of the greatest marketing things ever done. Um, but it is a classic whiskey. It is a whiskey which I believe everyone needs to have uh, tried yeah. at some stage. Because it really does, I mean, it's a great representation of that kind of salty whiskey without necessarily being particularly peaty. Now, Jura, you know, it's not your typical island malt, would you say? I mean, no. we've, we've been to all the islands. Yeah. Well, no, that's, that's not true. true. That's not true. Yeah, that's, that's a fact. Not been to and also Aaron and also Lewis. Not been to Aaron. I've been Aaron. Um, yeah, but we. We. Oh, we. wait. Sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> what, yeah, what was I thinking? But now, Jura, for those of you who do not know, it's, um, it's directly, directly north, right across the waterway from Isla. Actually, I mean, literally a stone's throw. You take well, a ferry. A little, little bit longer than a stone's throw. It's about well, three, four hundred meters. And it, big, big I can throw a stone that far. Are you kidding me? So from uh, Bunahaban um, and Kalila, you can see right across the Jura. You can see the so-called Paps of Jura across there, and it's a pretty fascinating place. We actually drove over in Mickey Head's uh, van. Oh, out, don't say that out loud. Running out of gas. Yeah. And it was pretty cool because when you get on Jura, it's, it's about from the ferry. It's about eight miles to the hotel and to the distillery because that's all there is there. I think at last count there's something in excess of 6,000 red deer running around the place. Um, and, and since we, we, we don't have our camera woman or camera guy this time. And sorry about last week about the all being tilted. I had a lot. Kelly's uh, fault. Uh, it was not his daughter's fault. That yeah. was Nigel. Um, so, and there's less than 200 people on Jura. Um, pretty fantastic place. And we get there and we just about run out of gas and I said to the lady, we can get some gas and she gave me the key drive about half a mile down, down the road and there's down just a pump sitting there um, and you fill up and then you go back and you lock it up again and go back and tell them how much you spent and then they send you out the back to put the money in the box by yourself without you were checking up but that was pretty... That's a true trust system. Yeah, true trust system. Thank God because we would have been uh, kind of screwed up. And, and, and about the best venison burgers I've ever oh had in my life. Oh my God. Um, Do you remember the dram we had? It was out of the element series, the, either the fire or the... I had the fire, that's a fact. With our our, our uh, venison burgers, we had yeah, the, the that, fire. That actually brings me to one, to a negative point of Jura that I see in terms I, of the ABV. I know what's going on. So, and you, you're not going to give me crap about being casual Wednesday today again with my little uh, bourbon t shirt. My I, I look rough. I, I kind of forgot what we were supposed I'm to do. I'm trying to my eyes to your fashion. I mean, um, you got your fancy little wee purple socks on there. And, you know, I'm color coordinated. I'm, uh, uh, so, one of the things I want to go about Jura is Jura is typically bottled around about at 40% mark. I think the 16 the, is bottled at 46 or 43. 43. Uh, yeah, these ones that we tried on Isla at the, sorry, on Isla, on Jura, at the Jura Hotel, were 48, 49, I think one of them was 51. All the elements, yeah. And, and oh my goodness, they, they just absolutely exploded. So good, they that was so, such so a good. good, and it's a shame that they didn't put out more of those because it was a very limited release, and for those of you who can get your hands on some, damn, they were really, really, really good whiskeys from Jura, and that would have been whiskeys 
that Mickey Heads would have been laying down. You know, for those of you who are massive Art Bag fans and, and know Mickey or know Mickey's a master distiller. Which is why it was apt that we went over in Mickey Van. Well, that, there is a bit of that. That's, that's, there's reasons for everything that we do, actually. This is true. But, um, but yeah, so Mickey was at Jura for years before um, he came over to Art Bag. And uh, he came over to Art Bag in, in 2006. Uh, well, technically in 2005, but he really started in 2006. And obviously left Jura and left it into to Willie's capable hands. But when we were over, Willie was sadly in hospital at the time, which he's fully recovered now and he's doing great. Good on you, Willie. Um, but Graham gave us a bit of a show around. And w what a cool, cool, cool distillery. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's one of those ones that I, and I, I feel bad about bringing up the ABV because the smell of the whiskey is fantastic. I've always enjoyed drinking Jura. You get that nice island esqueness. Yeah. Yeah. Straight away, there's that little bit of saltiness, that little bit of kind of brine that you expect, um, or you, you, that, you, that you do get. It's got a wee, uh, a little bit of youth, a spiritiness about it. Um, so again, I would, I would question the fact that had that been bottled at 46%, you wouldn't get that, because I just think the spirit's been like thinned out a little bit. And do we know if they chill filter? It's 40%, but it's, it's got to be, it's got to be run through. Yeah, it could be non chill filtered. It's, it's, yeah, I, I, I bet if I was a big betting man, I'd have to say, yeah, it's chill. It still smells fantastic. Again, I, I do love I, the smell of it. But I would love to see it 43, but it is a 40. Um, a bit of caramel in there. It's got a, it's got a lovely little seascape yeah. nose. And, and it's soft. It, it's, it, and don't get me wrong, it's delicious and very, very drinkable. But I think it belies the fact that it's only 40% because there's that warmth of alcohol, which means for me shows it's unbalanced, which seems to me 40% is wrong for it. But, um, it's all about money these yeah. days. And when you bottle something at 40%, you're going to get a heck of a lot more than you are when you bottle it at 43%. Still love your whiskey, and this uh, potentially is a, is a great whiskey for people who are coming out of the Highlands and space side looking for something a little bit different. This would be a great way to start getting into that salty brininess without kind of getting your head blown off or your taste buds exploded and not enjoying it because this I think would be too hard for most people. Not that it's a hard whiskey. No, but it's their original jump. Jump. Yeah. Well, what you say is true, you know, if you used to drink in your space side and Highland style whiskeys, but you want something a bit different, I mean, that's what we do with whiskey. It's all about the journey, you know? The so. Journey. When you try, or you get someone to try a whiskey like this, and they come to you and they say they like, that they like sherry style or American bourbon style whiskeys, as a whiskey that's been matured in bourbon barrels, and you can get them on to something like a Jura, a, a Kleinleach, an yeah. Old Pulteney, any of these guys that are kind of like bridge whiskeys, you know, they're, they're not all the way on the one end with no peat at all, you know, they'll kind of be in the middle, a bit of that coastal, salty, briny bit that I actually really, really, really yeah. love. Um, it's not necessarily the smoke and the peat that you know I love, which I do, but I love that salty, briny character of Russ Keep us Kiwis. <laughs> That's a bit loose yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. Before, before you get called Kiwi, I want to see a passport. Uh, but I agree, and, and it's that, that it, to me, it shows that, that the spirit of the place. Yes, and you are picking up that, that saltiness by and large is picked up because of where the barrels are, are, are aging. There is a little bit of it being infused into the, into the malting process for some of them. Um, but just those those barrels breathing away, picking up some salty air. Um, because it's not as salty as, like, let's say, your Talisker. Um, no, it's not, but it, again, is, it, I'm going to keep banging on about it, but it, is that being reduced because of the alcohol content? Yeah, I, you know, keep in mind, you and I are less than 1% of the drinking population. Most people, your average punters, they're going to try something like this, which we've let people, you know, come in the shop and they'll try this, yeah, and they're like, yeah, it's yeah, really cool, really good. You know, and it's just something new to their palate. For you and I, it's not necessarily new, but it is a good, it's an approachable whiskey, it's easy to drink, and what we try to do to get people drinking different styles of whiskeys, that's a good. I suppose if you did a lineup of whiskeys, this would be a great whiskey in, say, number two in the lineup, and you start building them up from there if you're doing that, a flight of whiskeys. Uh, or, or a little bit later, number two, because let's say your first one would be like uh, a Dolph Winnie or a Knock, uh, an American Oak, only American Oak. Orange Team. Yeah, something like that. Oak. And then two could easily be many, many other things. And this could be a three or a four. It could be, it could be up there. Because you wouldn't want to put that salt and brine on straight away. Because I just feel like the middle of the palate is kind of a little bit lacking. But it's actually got a really lovely finish. And I think I'm going to have really to overrule our, our water. Uh, so no, I was, I was going to. If we yeah. put water in that, it, it really well, will. Again, I'm I'm look, gonna, you guys I'm, can, but we, we, we I'm just. Gonna, I'm going to do it just for 
Because well, then if you do, then go ahead. We're, but we're, I, we're, I just, we're scientists. Yes, I've been, yeah, I am. I only put two in there. You can see some yeah. oiliness there as, as, the, as the water goes in. I, I, I just think it's going to dampen it down and knock it way, way back. I'm at 40%, okay, but 38, 39%. See, it's still, you look at the side of your glass, it's quite viscous, you know, it's quite, it's your typical aisle, aisle kind of, you know, real, like, wow, on your finger there, really, really, really viscous, really, but it's a beautiful smell, though. Wow, it's taking a long time to actually dry out. It's, it's so very oily, very completely oily. smooth it over, like, wow. it's, um, and I'm glad I only put two drops in there, because any more, you wouldn't actually be able to, but see, it all on the nose, though, you do the get nose some, is good. The nose is actually good. There's a couple more sweeter notes coming through, a little bit of that candied sweetness. I bang on about it all the time and name drop about doing tasting good Colin Scott, taking the whiskey down to uh, 20%. Just keep adding drops of water, keep adding drops of water. We're not tasting it, all we're doing is smelling it, and you're picking up those different aromas. See, uh, actually, I'm glad you did that, because that does, it's not bad. Uh, it, it's, you know, and a lot of people have it in their head no matter what the bottling proof is, they want to add a touch of water. God forbid an ice cube, please don't. But a touch of water, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and that's actually, I can't say that's bad. No, and and again, an average punter. Uh, again, I, yeah, I, I agree with you, I take, take that on board that we aren't your average punter, we get to try You're, you're definitely not, well, you're not your average <laughs> anything, I mean, honestly. Of course, yeah, look at me, the way I'm freaking, uh, I'm I mean, gonna take it as an absolute compliment. Yeah, um, yeah. You go right in. But, uh, it's a, is that a good whiskey? Yes. If you're trying to sell that yep. to the general public, they want something different. Well, again, I mean, always had a policy in the shop. Never sell anything that you wouldn't buy by ourselves. And this is in here for a reason. We've always enjoyed the jurors. Might not be our, our favorites in our kind of desert island, but that fits in there really nicely. And, it, and it's... But, it, you know, you love judge it. a distillery on, not necessarily, okay, their mainstream stuff, but you go out and find some cool, I mean, we have had some awesome yeah. Jura bottlings, independent bottlings. You know, it's been kind of OMCs that we've had. Been. OMCs, you know, Caden Heads has done some yeah. really good ones, but there has been some phenomenal bottlings of Jura. Um, and they're official bottlings. And, you know, they're older than the 1977s. You know, they've got a, a, it, it's actually an accessible whiskey to get some age. And the, 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 does Jura suffer from the fact that it's so close to Milan? And quite often gets put into the Isla basket, and people then start comparing it to the Arctics and Lake Bull. And Bull. I don't think so, because then you have something like Brooklady. Okay. You know, in Brooklady, hell, they're super successful, and they are on Isla, right in the heart of Isla. And I don't think they suffered all for being a non-peated whiskey. Now, of course, we know now they have their PC range, the Optimal range, but for Brooklady themselves, the Brooklady bottlings are zero peat. Um, so no, I don't, I don't think so, and I think they have. Uh, a point of difference with the style of whiskeys they make, kind of like Tobermory, Aaron. You know, all these aisles have a point of difference, which is kind of cool. You know, and Talisgree, you know, everybody's, they're quite different and unique. Just despite the way you dress, you, you're speaking the same <laughs> Some semblance of, uh, well, it just kind of rolls out, you see. Some smartness. But uh, we'll, 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 let's, we'll, we'll give the Talisgree a crack. But look, if you are ever over, because not that many people get a chance to go visit Jura, they are super, super friendly and welcoming people. Just maybe give them a bell and let them know you're coming. Yeah. Make sure you've got enough petrol before you go. Yeah, you might want to. And on exactly. Sunday when everything's closed. Exactly. I mean, there was that petrol station on Isla. Might be in on yeah, Sunday. Might. 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 Like, and then they have the phone number. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty, it really is a step back in time, but it's the best that's step back that's in time. Oh, um, right, so uh, if anyone's uh, interested in a little bit of trivia, there was a very famous uh, pop band of the late KLF. There was going to be a, a test for them. Oh, sorry. Anyway, they, in a uh, fit of um, or standing up to the establishment, actually well, burned allegedly a million pounds um, notes. on, on Jura. Actually burned the notes and, and, and filmed it. Um, they've been asked subsequently, did they actually burn it? And they've kind of been a little bit kind of. No, I can't really say, but none of them is living the high life these days. No, so, uh, it's, it's yeah. an offense. It's a federal offense to, to burn the, the Queen's money in and, and America as well. In fact, any country for that matter, burn a federal note. But, uh, but yeah, they have a big bonfire dancing around it. and Yeah, that's about as dumb a protest. Let's, let's burn money that you've earned. And uh, I, I 
I can sure think of other ways to protest. Well, potentially they, 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 they thought they were going to do a lot more money, which uh, I think the age run came to an end roughly yeah. about the same time. Probably the next day after that fire. <laughs> so, now, I mean, you smell that compared to what we've just had. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, different animals, different no, fish. Most, most definitely. So, um, we visited Talisker a year or so ago. Oh, you know, Jesus. Yeah, the nose exactly. on yeah, that. The nose yeah. is amazing. Awesome. The sky, and I'll say this to everybody, Scott, I'm not one for stopping and taking photographs of scenery. Uh, Sorry, we had to keep stopping on Scott because that was that was amazing. That, that was magical fairyland. There were waterfalls falling out of everywhere. It's how people, when people come to New Zealand, especially when you go to the South Island and you drive around, and they're stopping off every lookout point. And of course, we're just driving by. But us at Sky, it's the same. You're just in awe. It is a spectacular. You, the the, well, the mountains are so high. You think, oh, okay, little rolling hills in Scotland. The mountains on Sky are ginormous and beautiful. The it scenery as you're driving around. And it was so green. I mean, it was super green. It was almost like it was, it was being. And hey, we were there and it was super sunny. I mean, not a cloud in the yeah. sky. We got the photos to prove it. And then we rock up to, to Talisker. It's actually not the easiest place to find. You drop down this steep road, you're in the middle of that, that kind of bay, and it's steep across the other side. Talisk is sitting down the bottom there, the cat was waiting there for us. Um, Hamish, the distillery manager, who um, we, we got to meet and got some great photos of the back of the um, worm tubs. Yeah, because in Talisk, they've got exposed worm tubs out the back of the distillery, which of course you're not necessarily supposed to be, but as Nigel and I do, but explore. Also, there was also that line on the serpent line up. Yes, coming out of the distillery. Yeah, so it goes out and then actually goes up and goes across and then comes back down. And it's believed, alleged that it's where the line arm, so coming off the still goes that way and then it shoots up just as it's going out the building, goes up and then comes back down and goes into the big. And they're almost square, those worm tubs, um, in terms of the way that they go down. But they believe that's where Talisker gets its distinctive pickling patch. Now, is that not. They that's actually so have the purifier off the low wine still, as we call them. Well, that's what we were getting confused about because we had a, a stand up opening here one night when, when Lloyd Thomas was here. It was because they called their low wines the spirit. The, no, the, yeah, it wasn't. The, the, the spirit still was called the, the, the low wines, and then there was it's a really bizarre. It was, it was quite confusing, but we figured it out. So, yes, there was a purifier, correct? Yes. It was coming off the, um, the low wines. The, which well, is the initial still, the yeah, first still. The, first the one where typically it'll the come off your yeah. ABV. Yeah, the, it'll typically come off. 27, 28 percent ABV. Girly man proof is. So, is was it the still or was it the spirit still? Now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty it sure it's the original still. We could be corrected or I could be corrected. But it was it was it was a really good distillery again. It was one of those ones where the tool was 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 nice enough and, and, and uh, well, your old mate caught up with us. Yeah, Hamish. Yeah. Was it Hamish. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we we did get a little bit of more in. Depth. There was the thing. The tour itself was great. The girls were very knowledgeable and lovely. But it was when we got to go around the back with Hamish and have a look. At the worm and he gave us a little bit them. more. Now, I did think it was interesting. If you remember, Hamish was talking about um, the exact specifications oh, for yeah. Talisker cool. are 18 ppm's. Now, anyone that knows anything about uh, peated whiskeys, whether it's Lager Bull and Art Bag, you know, you've done distillery tours, and Art Bag, let's say it's roughly 55 to 58 uh, part ppm's, you know, parts per million fennels, which is how they measure the smoke. In a bottle, and so Hamish is explaining to us that the specifications that Talisker are exact. It's 18 ppm. So how do you do that? Because every batch is going to be different. They actually have non-peated Talisker. They will marry that in to get those specs to be exactly 18 ppm. So if you talk about consistency, and of course, you know, with whiskeys and big distillers like this, they aim to be consistent. That's a beautiful way to be consistent on it, and it's exact. 18 ppm's, and that's how they do it is with non p spirit. I thought that was bloody cool. And you and I have been doing this for a while. Obviously, no one's been doing it as long as you. But uh, <laughs> but I you said I'm old. I, I hadn't heard or read that about Talisker before. No, no, not until Hamish had told us so that day. Which was kind of like, okay, that, that, I jumped in my notepad. Normally, I'm just nodding my head, going, yeah, yeah. But as soon as he said that, I was like, ah, so that, it's all over my notes. But I thought that was very interesting of how they can keep that consistency with Talisker, and. But the thing that attracts people, like on the nose, both you saw Nigel and I's expression, we dove our nose in there, and you get that hit. You know, it's bottled continuously, what is it, 45.6? 45. No, 45. 45. 45.8, and that's how they bottle their whiskeys. And for a Diageo bottling, I think it's pretty cool that they do do it 
What are you trying to say about the agent? <laughs> just a big, huge company. And, and um, the I accountants are running a muck left and right through distilleries. I appreciate what they've done with Talisker and how they've maintained its integrity. Yeah. And it's such a, it's a beastie animal. I mean, it's not a whiskey for the faint heart. If you were to come into the shop and say you've just now started your whiskey journey, you want to, you know, get into it and try something. You know, and we'd start talking about Glenn Levitts and Glenn Moranges, Glenn Farkless, and so on. Not necessarily going to jump you into a Talisker right away. Definitely might jump you in there, but it would be one of those ones when you've been tasting things for a while. That is a bonfire on the beach. It, it's fantastic. It, it, obviously, it never, I never fail to appreciate how good Talisker is. Um, now, they do obviously the Distillers Edition as well. What does the Distillers Edition get done? It's something a bit different. I've asked you something. No, it's it's um, a Montiato. It was there, that's what I was thinking. It was something a little bit different. So I'm looking at the it's wrong. not the Fino. It's not the Muscatel. I'm just going to walk over there and find out. I want to say it's the Amon. Well, that's the store. I want to say, yeah, all the way to the far left. Oh, my name is Stiller's Edition. I want to say it's the Amon. It is a Sherry style. Amoroso. 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 Yep, yep, yeah, Amoroso. It starts with an A. It ends with an O. Yeah, you know. So it's live interaction today. You said Amoroso. I knew that they did something different. So, um, but... That, that whiskey, it, it, the people that like Talisker's, there, there is no going back. It's, For me, it's like, either do or don't. I, I, I like this because it's not, obviously, an 18 part For me, it's not as peaty and smoky as, say, something like my beloved RD. But I love it. It's got enough in there. It feels like you're blowing out smoke. Like you smoke this stuff. It's just like, oh, I love you, it. You feel the kelp beds on the beach? Uh, it, I mean, it's salty. And as you say, bonfire on the beach is a typical description for, for whiskeys like Isla. But this sits in there. I love that pepperiness that it has about it. Now, would you say, and, and we, we, we have told people, when you go to a specific distillery, that doesn't leave you. You remember that experience for the rest of your life, and that'll become one of your favorite trams. It's all about the experience. When we went to Talisker, did you potentially gain a, a better I, 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 I liked it more. I, li I definitely I, liked it more. There, I mean, was, there was no doubt. I mean, I, we liked it before. I liked it before. But when we left there, I thought, damn, that is, it's yeah. cool, it's really good. And they just released the poor tree. Poor tree, yeah. Or, looks like Port Rudy, but Port tree. The other side of the island is where you stay, the little yeah. port. But very, very cool. Uh, going to Talisker, I mean, you've got to visit as many facilities as you can, but Talisker is one of those ones which is just a little bit different, a little bit out there, um, and one of the coolest ones for a I, I, I have to say is, you know, we, we, we do kind of rip on Diageo now and then, let's be honest, but for Talisker, they, 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 they do it well. Let's be fair, they do it well. Um, it's, uh, and it is a good tour, it's a beautiful, that visitor center, you know, when you pull up. And oh, what I was, the, the point I was getting to about Talisker, you know, when oh, you go visit. Point. Well, yeah, I get there eventually, it takes me a little while. Um, the ride to the distillery itself, you're taking in all of the scenery and it, it, it's really, it, you, you go past the castle, if any of you are Highlander fans out there, you know, before you go across the bridge to get on the sky, uh, I can't for the life of thinking uh, of the name. It's, 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 it's a legendary castle where, you know, Highlander was filmed, I mean, you see photos all the time, but you go past that castle to go across the bridge. From when Conor McLeod gets cast out. And... But, but, but the drive into the distillery, like Nigel said, we stopped numerous times for photos. Yeah. And then by the time you get to the distillery, you, you're just in such awe of the scenery, and you go to the distillery, and the whiskey actually tastes like the scenery. I don't know how you, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but. No, no, it, 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 it fitted. It, everything about Talisker, it, 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 was, it was kind of pretty cool. And I was, again, getting over, still getting over my, my food poisoning, and I was really coming right. So Talisker to me was tasting like yeah. I was a starving man. It tastes so it was, it was, it was like, wow. So we thought we lost him that trip a couple of times. <laughs> so uh, water for this one, three drops? Well, you know, uh, yeah, we'd have to just to see what happens because at 45.8, it can require a couple of three drops. I guess to open up the Bring it salinity up. and... Yeah. But we can see that, how good that looks. But Talisker's got a pretty full range of whiskeys. They've got the 57 degree, um, which is the location. Normal. 7 North, and they've got uh, obviously Talisker 10, Talisker Distillers Edition, 18 year old, the 25, Portree. They've got another one, uh, I'll think of it in just a moment, uh, but the Portree is a really nice one from Port Casks. Uh, but they, they have a beautiful, beautiful range of whiskeys now. Well, uh, the Storm. Yeah, what I love about like, adding a little bit of water to this, it's, it's, it's like, a, like a damp ash. It kind of softens that fire down a little bit, makes it more. Ashy, a lot more sweet. 
it's really, you get the little candies out much more now. But you still, that, that little beautiful coastal, burning, smoky, bacon, right, a little more bacon maybe. Say it again. Now you bought whiskeys at 46, 45.8, you add a couple of drops of water to it, you're going to see the belt. At 40%, I think you just soften it off. Uh, oh my goodness. If anything. Man, the pepper shows up much more, that peppery spice kind of. But so if anything, I'd probably prefer my talisman with those couple of drops of water. Yeah, right. Because I see it open up. Wow. That's, um, that, that is a damn good whiskey. I mean, seriously, when's the last time we had Talus for 10? Just, I mean, we have other oh, Talus, but it's just Talus for 10. And that, that falls into that category of whiskies that sometimes you go, oh, I've had that and move on. But there's going to be whiskies that you're going to go back to time and time again, and Talus is going to be one of those whiskies. Yeah, I think you, you always have to have a Talus for yeah. covered. Uh, it's, uh, it's either something like a Talisco, an Ard Deagle, uh, a Lake of Auckland for me, a Glen Farkless. Glendronic Spring, man. Yeah, Glendronic Spring. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, you need, we probably work out, you need to have at least 20 bottles open. Yeah, you really, really do. Any I mean, any you can't leave out a, a Ben Air, uh, a Glen Morange. And then I'm looking back over there at the Bourbons as yeah, well. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so just have a big, the bigger the better, basically. There's one case on the planet, bigger is better. Um, okay, so before we wrap it up, we will again mention uh, the New Zealand Whiskey Show coming up May 12, 13, and 14. Tickets have gone quite spastic uh, this, this last Is that week. Is that to use? Spastic? Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Sure. They've, got, they've gone crazy. They've gone yeah, crazy. So, gone crazy. So, so, don't, so don't, jump in there. Don't, don't miss out. Um, the other thing is, Sam, a viewer question. When are you going to put the tastings up? For the when are we going to do the tastings? Well, with the show coming up, I didn't want to jam myself up too much. But we will have a Mortlock tasting in April. We will not do a tasting in May because clearly the whiskey show is going to take up the time and it's just got me bent out. So um, there's lots of stuff coming up. So next month you're going to do Mortlock. Mortlock. Then it's the whiskey show. Whiskey then show. It's Art Bag Day. Which Art Bag Day is the, actually not May this year, it'll be June 3rd, June 3rd. Queen's birthday. Uh, and then a couple, three weeks after that. Actually, maybe we'll do the Art Bag tasting in July. And Art Bag tasting this year is going to be exceptional because well, it's, it's the sixth year. Because they're going, what the hell's going on? It's the sixth year cool. of Art Bag. Right, well, I'm going to walk out there and close it off. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, slaughter, and, and then you can see so you what happens when we drink. You can, you can fade out on Sam. Why, why, why would you want to fade out on uh, me? Ever?